so seventh chapter fundamental right fundamental right uh, let us study the fundamental rights are enshrined okay enshrined in the part 3 underline that part 3 of the constitution from article 12 to 35 okay so in the top you, you write down part 3 and also write down article 12 to 35 article 12 to 35 deals with fundamental right in this regard the framers of the constitution derived inspiration from the constitution of usa so there may be a question from where we have taken the fundamental right is from okay fundamental right is been inspired from the us constitution in usa it is known by the name bill of rights underline the word bill of rights okay part 3 of the constitution is uh, rightly regarded as a magna carta of the india magna carta of india means most important law okay it is the basis of everything so magna carta of the constitution uh, the constitution sorry it contains a very long and a comprehensive list of justiciable underline the word justiciable justiciable means in case of violation of the fundamental right you can go to the dam uh, you can go to the uh, supreme court directly and get it okay so that is what is known as justiciable justiciable uh, fundamental right it is not just it is there and if you don't get what to do okay you if you don't get you can have a remedy also so justiciable fundamental right in fact the fundamental right in our constitutions are more elaborate than those found in the constitution of any other country in the world including the usa that means most elaborate fundamental right in the world most comprehensive fundamental right in the world is provided in india okay we have teams we have inspired from the usa but still it is more comprehensive than the usa the fundamental rights are guaranteed by the constitution to all persons without any discrimination okay fundamental right is given to everybody without description they are description means um, no like i am i am not giving to you you are not i am not giving to no no kind of any discrimination discrimination means ill treatment okay that is not there okay then comes um, um, the um they uphold the equality of all individuals equality of all individuals underline that fundamental rights provides equality to, to all individuals the dignity of the individuals the larger public interest and the unity of nation okay so these are the things which is uphold in fundamental right what are the things first one is uh, when I when there is a num, um, comma comma they are given now okay and here what I normally do is I put one two three do in between the line okay uh, if you are able to see that uh, see I have marking as one here okay then two here hmm? so this way you can improve your uh, no uh, skill of reading hmm? okay so first one is uphold the equality of individuals dignity of the individual second one third one is larger public interest and fourth one is unity of nation okay. The fundamental rights are meant for promoting the ideals of political democracy. Underline the word. They will ask you what is the purpose of having a fundamental right. Fundamental rights are there to uh, increase the political de democracy of India. Political democracy of India. They prevent the establishment of authoritarian. Authoritarian. Authoritarian means like a monarchy, like an absolute rule. Whatever they say, whatever they do, unquestioned. Okay. So that is not possible. So that is what they are saying. They prevent, what they are saying, prevent means stop the establishment of authoritarian and despotistic. Um, D is P O T. Okay. My eyes are not. Hmm? Okay. Because there is a, um, this one. Okay. Fine. Um, despotic rule means that is a this one a monarchy rule where uh, the king does everything that is that is not possible okay uh, and the freedom of the people against the invasion by the state okay they operate uh, as limitations on the tyranny okay tyranny of the executive and arbitrary law of the legislature they operate as a limitation that means whatever executives can do that is not possible whatever the law can be made and they can violate the fundamental right that is not possible in short the aim of uh, my aim they aim at establishing a government of laws and not for men okay not of men that means who were coming to that position they should be able to obey that law okay it is not like this person is you know atrocity another person atrocity it is basically they are promoting underline that word um, they are establishing government of laws not of men government of men it's not there it is government of law okay the fundamental rights are named so because they guarantee and protected by the constitution which is the fundamental law of the land okay why the word fundamental right is coming because it is from it is fundam it is coming from the fundamental law of the land which is the fundamental law of the land the constitution is the fundamental law of the land okay so 
Fundamental land then it is protected by the constitution, which is the fundamental law of the land. Okay, means every every institution in India derive their power from the constitution. So the very fundamental or the supreme law of the land is the constitution. They are un fundamental. So in the sense they are the most essential for the all round development. What's uh, material, intellectual, uh, moral, and spiritual of the individuals? So it is required for the overall development of the individuals. Okay, what are the new things? Material, intellectual, moral, spiritual. Orally, uh, sorry. <laughs> Originally, the constitution provided for the uh, seven fundamental rights. Original constitution uh, had seven fundamental right. Okay, Article One. Uh, sorry, um, fundamental rights. So this seven you have to memorize. Memorize. Yeah. Still now I not said the word memorize. Now you have to memorize. Okay. First is the right to equality. Okay. Concurrently, Article 14 to 18. Then right to freedom. Article 19 to 22. Then right against exploitation. Article 23 and 24. Then right to freedom of religion. Okay. So India is a secular country. The preamble talks about that, right? So that is uh, here mentioned here as a fundamental right. Article 25 to uh, 28 talks about uh, religious freedom. Okay, that is that is why India is a secular country. Now, cultural and educational rights, Article uh, 29 and 30. Right to property, Article 31. Right to constitutional remedies, Article 32. Okay, so originally we had fundamental seven fundamental right, but now we have only six fundamental right. We'll see how it is. However, the right to property was deleted from the list of fundamental rights by the 44th Amendment Act. Underline that. 44th amendment act removed the one fundamental right which is right to property which was under the article 31 under article 31 we had right to property that has been removed it is made as a legal right under article 300a uh, in part 12 of the constitution so the present position of um, uh, right to property is it is no more a fundamental right it is a, just a legal right it is mentioned in article 300a and it is mentioned in the part 12 of the constitution of the constitution so the present there are only six fundamental rights okay this six fundamental rights you have to memorize with the articles okay first one is uh, right to uh, equality article 14 to 18 then right to uh, freedom article 19 to 22 then right against exploitation article 23 to uh, 23 24 to 23 24 okay then comes religious right 25 to 28 then uh, cultural and educational rights it comes at 29 30 Right to property is removed. That you can uh, may not uh, no, may not mention under fundamental right. Then Article Thirty Two, uh, right to constitutional remedies. That is very important. Constitutional remedies because that give remedy. I told you it is justiciable fundamental right. So how this is a justiciable fundamental right is because of the Article Thirty Two. We'll discuss about it. Okay. So this is an introduction about the fundamental right. Let us go into the features of fundamental right. The fundamental rights guaranteed by the Constitution are character characterized by the following. some of them are available only to the citizen so some of them are available only to the citizen while others are available to all others all persons uh, whether citizen foreigners or a legal person like corporations uh, or companies so some are available only to the citizen some are available to everybody they are not absolute underline that word underline the word underline that they are not absolute absolute means it is not always guaranteed it is not always possible the government can take away the fundamental right government can take away the fundamental right with the authority of law it they are not absolute but qualified the state can impose underline that impose reasonable restriction it they can for example now the lockdown is there section 144 of lockdown we have freedom freedom of movement is there i want to go to uh, beach i want that is not possible understood so fundamental right is not absolute that can be taken away these are these are the rights which is not absolute that means it can be taken away by the government any time it can be taken by the government uh, we have seen the lockdowns are there section 144 is in place people cannot move but we have a right to freedom people can move from any part of the country to any other part but now that is not possible so under uh, under reasonable restriction they can curtail the fundamental right fundamental rights are not absolute that is a very important keyword underline that fundamental rights are not absolute okay thus they strike a balance between the right of a individual and those of the society as a whole between the individual liberty and the social control so it is playing it, it is actually playing a balance between the individual liberty you, you have a liberty but you cannot uh, disturb the other people okay so the liberty individual liberty and the social control that uh, balance it is making all of them are available against the arbitrary action 
of the state okay all of the fundamental rights are against the arbitrary state action that means without any reason they are simply saying that yeah you come i will kill you uh, like in olden days chengiz khan dal if you see uh, he will simply kill the people or a gladiator movie people will uh, kill each other no those kind of things are not possible some reason should be there some uh, no acceptability should be the arbitrariness again so fundamental rights are against the arbitrary of the state that means against the uh, state which which has just doing something which is against the law which is not as per the law simply i uh, called somebody uh, i am killing you because i don't like the your nose or i don't like your shirt that and all not possible so arbitrary actions against the state can be uh, can be uh, managed by the fundamental right okay however some of these are also against the action of the private individual some people uh, some form, some of the fundamental rights are against the state some of the fundamental rights are against the individual people also for example untouchability okay uh, i cannot practice untouchability in my institute saying that you no know, you come from other institute other um, 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 other state or you are coming you are a boy or a girl or any kind of uh, you are upper caste or lower caste any kind of discrimination if i am doing i will also go to jail so some of the fundamental rights are against the state and some of the fundamental rights are against the private individuals some of them are negative in character that is place limitation on the authority of the state while the other are positive in nature conferring certain privileges on the person so some of the fundamental rights are negative in character they are um, against the state okay and some of them are giving some privileges to some people so some of them are negative in character and some of them are positive in character fundamental rights so for what are the features we have seen so far first we have seen it is only sometimes it is available to the citizen only sometimes it is available to the other than citizens also then it is not absolute that means it can be taken away by the government then third one arbitrary it is against the arbitrary action of the state as less well against certain private individuals then it is sometimes it is a negative in character sometimes it is in positive in character they are justiciable this i had told you they are justiciable allowing person to um, move move the court uh, for their enforcement if and when they are violated in case your fundamental rights are violated you can directly go to the supreme court that is possible they are defended and guaranteed by the supreme court so who is the guardian of the constitution fundamental right um, uh, guardian of the constitution supreme court so who is the guardian of the fundamental right that is also fundamental right uh, supreme court what happened to me? okay so supreme court is a uh, guarantee t okay, again it is safeguarding the fundamental right okay and supreme court is also guardian of the constitution so here underline the word defended and guaranteed by the supreme court hence the aggrieved person can directly go to the supreme court not necessarily by the way of appeal against the judgment of the high court you can directly go to the supreme court okay when the violation of fundamental right there are uh, they are no sacrosanct or permanent the parliament can cut they are not permanent we told you they are not absolute they are not permanent it can be taken away the parliament can curtail or repeal them uh, but only by the constitutional amendment okay not by the ordinary act okay if they want to if they want to remove the fundamental right they have to bring an uh, amendment in the constitution we have seen the article already 368 so under that they have to bring an amendment they can remove the uh, fundamental right term that is possible okay moreover uh, this can be done with uh, this can be done uh, moreover this can be done without affecting the basic structure of the constitution this underline the word basic structure this will come to it later uh, if you want to just mention here uh, there was one uh, this uh, 1973 kesha vanand bharathi case was there uh, that time the supreme court said that some parliament does not have unlimited uh, power of amending the constitution parliament can do only uh, certain changes they cannot entirely change the constitution so certain basic structures are there in the constitution which cannot be removed by the fundamental uh, removed by the parliament okay so the fundamental right can be removed without affecting the basic structure of the constitution okay okay they can be suspended during the operation of national emergency except guaranteed under article 20 and 21 so underline that article 20 and 21 we have seen uh, we have seen this so right to freedom okay 19 to 22 is a right to freedom so from in that two article 19 uh, 20 and 21 uh, cannot be removed even during the national emergency so underline this they can be suspended during national emergency except 2021 <coughs> further the six rights guaranteed by uh, article 19 can be suspended only when the national uh, emergency is declared on the grounds of war or external aggression so national emergency can be declared for war or external aggression okay and not on the grounds of armed rebellion okay so there are certain reasons for which it is if you want write on the in the side you can write 
it comes under article 352 okay in article 352 national emergency can be imposed okay national emergency can be imposed for war or external aggression okay china is going to attack or we are going to attack china uh, or it, war is happening at the time we can have a national emergency and i um, mean national emergency can also be there if there is an armed rebellion people are protesting against the lockdown they have a lot of guns and the um, weapons with them okay with for that also we can have a national emergency okay so in case of war or external aggression we can uh, suspend article 90 Okay, but armed rebellion we cannot suspend armed uh, Article 19. So read this again if there is a confusion. Further, the six rights guaranteed by the uh, Article 19 can be suspended. Underline that only when the emergency is declared on the grounds of war or external aggression. Okay, and not on the grounds of armed rebellion. <coughs> okay. Uh, the scope of operation is limited. There means uh, fundamental right. Okay, fundamental right scope of operation is limited by Article Thirty One A, saving uh, of law, providing for acquisition of estates, etc. Article Thirty One B, uh, validation of certain acts and regulation, including the Ninth Schedule, and Article Thirty One C, saving the laws affecting them. Uh, certain directive principles. Second, okay. not much important. Just ignore it. One one time reading, fine. So this ninth point, not much relevant. <coughs> not much relevant. Not much important. <coughs> If you forget that, also no problem. Um, their application to the uh, members of the armed forces, paramilitary forces, uh, police forces, intelligence agencies, and um, uh, analogous services can be restricted or abrogated by the parliament. Okay, that is Article thirty three. That means fundamental rights are not available to certain services like people in. Um, Army. They are saying I have right to speech, right to speak. Uh, I can express my uh, this one. So he will come and see the secrets of the army. That is not possible. So fundamental rights are not available to certain agencies. That is allowed under Article Thirty Three. That is allowed. Okay, who can do this? Parliament can remove those fundamental right if they want to do for some secret services or for armed forces. The application can the application can their application can be restricted while martial law is in force in the in any area. Martial law means military rule. Okay, if there is any martial law, military rule is in place during that time, we can remove this. That is mentioned in Article Thirty Four. Most of them are directly enforceable. Okay, self executory. While few of them can be enforced on the basis of law made by them, giving effect to them. Such as law, such a law can be made only by the parliament. Underline that. So fundamental rights, most of them are self executory. That means um, it is present, and if it is violated, you can go to the listen. Okay, most of them are directly enforceable. Most of them are directly enforceable. Okay, some of them require a separate law. Okay. And uh, and uh, yeah, that law who has to make that law? That law has to be made by the parliament only, not by the state legislature. Okay, so that uniformity throughout the country. This is mentioned in Article Thirty Five. So what is Thirty Five? So till Thirty Two, we have seen uh, in that fundamental right. So Thirty Three says that uh, in case of some certain services, parliament can uh, reduce the uh, fundamental right. Okay, that is Thirty Three. Thirty Four says that in case of military rule, fundamental rights can be removed. Okay, then Thirty Five says that uh, most of the uh, most of the fundamental rights are self executory. That means it is automatically enforceable. In some fundamental rights, the it, uh, the law has to be made by the parliament only, not by the state legislature. Okay, so clear. So we have seen the uh, introduction about fundamental right. We have seen the features of fundamental right. Now we let us go further. Definition of the state. Definition of the state. The term state has been used in different provisions concerning the fundamental right. Hence, Article Two L has defined the term for the purpose of Part Three. According to it, the state includes the following. Okay. okay. So who will provide the fundamental right? It will be the state which will be provide the fundamental right. So if at all there is a question, who is the state or what is the state? That is mentioned in Article Twelve of the Constitution. So what are the what are the definition of state? It has got A, B, C, D. Okay, so everything you should understand. Just take it. Uh, government and the Parliament of India, that is executive and legislative organs of the Union government. Okay. So what is the state? Parliament is a state as well as government. Government means executive, Prime Minister, President. Everybody is a state. government and the legislature of the states also for we have seen the union the second one is saying state okay third one all local authorities that is municipal panchayat district boards okay improvement trust okay so whatever the boards local authorities which is authority by uh, defined by the authority of law or by the government that is also all other authorities that is statutory underline the word statutory statutory and non statutory authorities like Uh, LIC, okay, ONGC. Say that means wherever a government-funded institution is there. Okay, ONGC is a PSU. PSU means public sector undertaking. Okay, so either it is created by the act of the law. So uh, encircle the statutory. Okay, if you want to write down, if you are first time you hearing this word, uh, statutory means act of created by the act of law. Act of the law. For example, I'll give you LIC is created by the act of the law. Okay, 
uh, if I want uh, GST council, okay, GST council created by the Act of the Law. So those are which is which is having a backing of the law because it's a statutory. So anything which is funded by the government, okay, uh, uh, either it is statutory or it is not statutory, we have to uh, accept that as a state. Okay, so this is the definition of state. So government and parliament of the state, government and parliament of the uh, some center, all the local that is municipal panchayati, all this, then any authority which is created by the government funding. Thus, state has been defined in a wider sense so as to include all its agencies. It is the section, it is the action of these agencies that can be uh, challenged in the court as violating of the fundamental right. So, in case of violating a fundamental right, you have to file, um, file now in the case who is violating the fundamental right. These institutions are filing, violating, violating the fundamental right. According to the Supreme Court, even a private body, underline the word private body or an agency working uh, as an uh, instrument of the state falls within the uh, meaning of the state under article 3. So any private body which is working under the state government or it is funded by the state government, uh, that also concept is a state. That is what it is wider. Okay. So the state has been defined in article 12. State has been defined in article. So topic is uh, laws inconsistent with the fundamental right. What are the laws which are inconsistent with the fundamental right? What will happen to that? Article 13 declares that all laws that are inconsistent or in derogation of any fundamental right shall be void. In other words, it explicitly provides for the doctrine of judicial review. Remember that there is no doctrine of judicial review directly mentioned in our constitution. Judicial review word is not mentioned. But the definition of the judicial review is given under article 13. It says any law which undermines this part of the constitution. That means the uh, fundamental right if it is undermining then that law will be nullified. That will be cancelled. Okay. So it says that uh, this power has been conferred in the Supreme Court. It, the power is there for Supreme Court under Article 32 and for High Court under Article 226. Okay. That can declare a law unconstitutional, underline the word law unconstitutional and invalid on the, on the ground of contravention of any of the fundamental right. So if a government is making a law that undermines the fundamental right, then that law can be cancelled. It can be declared unlawful by the Supreme Court as well as by the High Court. There are two different articles. One is for Supreme Court under Article 32. One is for Supreme uh, High Court under Article uh, 226. The term law, the term law in Article 13 has been given a wide, uh, wide connotation so as to include the following. So what is the law? So here I said any law which undermines the uh, fundamental right will be declared unconstitutional. What is the law? The question comes, what is the law? The permanent law enacted by the parliament or by the state, state legislature. So law means anything which is enacted by the parliament or state legislature. Then temporary law like ordinance. Okay, underline the word ordinance. This we will discuss later. But here ordinance, I will just give an introduction. It is a temporary law made by the executive. The power is there for the president. The power is there for the governor to make a law uh, in, in case the parliament is not in session. For example, now um, during the lockdown, parliament is not in session and there was a law required, urgent law was required to safeguard the health workers, doctors and nurses because the people were attacking them. People were not allowing them to crim uh, criminate, criminate, criminate. Hmm? Okay, uh, that was not allowed. So they brought a law, a stringent law, which is if you are attacking the doctors or health workers, six months to seven year imprisonment is possible. How this was enacted when the parliament is not session through the audience method. That means it will be there in force till the parliament is coming into session or for maximum six months. Okay, then issued by the president or by so the law includes all the law made by the uh, parliament. Okay, the law also includes ordinance made by the president or the governor. Then a statutory instrument in the name of um, delegated legislation. There is some, something called delegated legislation. We call it as a subordinate legislation. Okay, that is also covered by this bylaws, rules, regulation, or any notification and non-legislative sources of law. That is the customs or the usage having a force of law. So anything, any kind of practices there in India which is uh, in usage, in custom, tradition. That, for example, Sabari Mala issue. Okay, women were not allowed to enter the. Uh, temple so that is a usage that is in um, um, the way of living but that is question under under article 14 and 15 that it discriminates the right to equality understood okay thus no, not only any legislation uh, but any of them um, above can be challenged in the court and um, the fundamental rights and hence 
can be ordered and declared as a void okay so anything any incident which is happening in india uh, which is affecting the fundamental line that means can be declared as a void further article 13 declares that the constitution amendment is not a law uh, not a law and hence cannot be challenged however okay in article 13 they said that amendment constitution amendment is not a law so it cannot be challenged however in the uh, in the, whole, in the supreme court held that keshavanand bharathi case 1973 this we have seen in the preamble also that the constitution amendment can be can be challenged on the ground that it violates the fundamental right that forms a part of the basic structure of the constitution and hence that can be declared void so including the fundamental right in, in fundamental right if the uh, constitution amendment is brought and the fundamental right is getting affected that also can be declared void by the uh, supreme court that's what it is said here understood so what is this uh, portion of the um, chapter saying that uh, there is something called article 13 which allow the uh, supreme court or high court to declare any law inconsistent ultra virus or you can say unconstitutional if it is affecting the fundamental right of the constitution uh, of the constitution okay, and they have explained the law so in detail it can be anything which is passed by the parliament state legislature ordinance subordinate legislation or any customs or any usage which is a practice okay proceed yeah great so this table uh, table 7.1 there's a uh, right to equality is there okay so all the uh, article fundamental rights has been given here okay 14 to 18 so just have a go through okay, which i have already i think it is coming already we have discussed here you know six fundamental rights similar to that mm. then fundamental rights uh, of uh, foreigners so here table 7.2 uh, have a read uh, have a one read on this okay fundamental rights available only to the citizens and not to the foreigners is given in the left side in the right side fundamental right available to both citizen and the foreigner okay except the uh, enemy alien it is not available for the enemy alien but it is available for the foreigner okay so what is this uh, just note down is very simple to learn okay in the left side just write down 15 after 15 16 okay 16 then comes 19 okay underline the word 19 then 29 30 okay so what is this 15 16 is the consecutive number 29 30 is also consecutive number 19 comes in between these are the things available okay um, only to the citizen and not available to the foreigners okay then comes the, uh, this one 14 15 uh, 20 21 20 uh, all this just uh, not very important just remember this one what is uh, available only to the citizens other one you will understand okay <laughs> then fine right to equality right to equality equality before law and equal protection of law the okay, this is about article 14 article 14 is equality before law and equal protection of the law article 14 says that a state shall not deny to any person equality before the law or the equal protection of the law within the territory of india this provision confers right to on all persons whether citizens or non or foreigners foreigners Uh, moreover the word person includes a legal person such as statutory corporation companies registered society or any other type of person okay right so article four, article 14 we are there article 14 uh, there is a two components one is equality before law and equal protection of law so article 14 says the state that means the government cannot uh, discriminate anybody inside the territory it can be an indian it can be a foreigner also it can be an indian or it can be a foreigner also we cannot uh, discriminate them okay Uh, and person means not only the citizens okay but also a legal company also okay statutory society uh, registered society or any type of legal person the concept of co- co- equality before law the concept of equality before law is a british origin underline that equality before law is uh, has taken from british okay while the concept of equal protection of law has been taken from the america okay so equality before law and equal protection of law that is what the heading says equality before law is a take is taken from british constitution uh, british uh, laws you can see because they don't have constitution okay british uh, law uh, british law likewise equal protection of law uh, is taken from the american constitution the first concept uh, connotes absence of any special privileges in favor of any person okay that means yeah, what is the equality before law means okay now underline very very important read very carefully hmm? okay the absence of any special privileges in favor of any person okay uh, you cannot favor anybody okay special treatment for somebody that is not possible okay the um, the equal subject subjection of all person to the ordinary law underline the word ordinary law of the land administered by the ordinary law uh, courts 
that means a common loss which is available to everybody will be equal to be available to everybody else also there is no discount so this person is rich for them this law is not applicable this person is poor for him this law is not applicable so we cannot discriminate them the ordinary law of the country is applicable to all the people of the country then third one is no person rich or poor high or low official means is above the law that means everybody will have equal punishment that is what it in simple term in simple term it means that nobody is above the law everybody is below the law okay the law is supreme either rich person low person high income person low, low income person um, whatever uh, black person white person though there is no discrimination nobody is above the law nobody is above the law the second concept on the other hand that means second concept means equal equal protection of law equal protection of law the second concept on the other hand we can you understand the first concept first concept says there are three things to be followed one is absence of privileges nobody will get privileges okay second person is, second thing is um all persons are subjected to the ordinary law in the same manner third one is uh, nobody is above the law this three concepts including together is known as uh, equal protection of uh, equality before law equality before law that is taken from british constitution okay the second concept the, um, uh, the um, that is the equal protection of law Uh, the equality of treatment uh, under equal circumstances both in the privileges conferred and liabilities imposed by the law that means uh, when you are treating somebody okay you have to treat everybody equally in terms of privileges or in terms of any kind of uh, liability also you have to impose equal restrictions on everybody the similar application of the same law okay to all person who are similarly situated okay well, for example you take an uh, you make a group for example you make a bpl okay below poverty line this is an income so below that below that whoever is is there everybody will have a same kind of privileges same kind of schemes will be applicated to them okay the there should um, the the like should the like should be treated uh, like without any discrimination okay that's what same thing okay if it is confusing leave it no problem at all okay um the thus the former is a negative concept and the latter is a positive this you have to note down equality before law is a negative concept because the punishment will be given equally everybody is below the law nobody is above the law that is what the equality before law equal protection of them it's a protection you have giving some positive uh, discrimination you can say you are giving some uh, welfare schemes that will be given equally to everybody okay however both of them aim in establishing the underlying that equality of legal status okay opportunities and justice okay so article 14 try, tries to help what is that equality of legal status opportunity and justice understood and then comes uh, the supreme court held that where equals are uh, equals and unequals are treated differently article 14 does not apply that means you have creating a two different uh, section of people for them one people you are giving say this thing and one people you are giving another thing that is allowed okay Uh, while article 14 forbids class legislation it permits reasonable classification of persons objects and transaction by the law but the classification should not be arbitrary how do you classify you income is one basis okay education is one basis for example uh, a person who is had done has done has done a degree uh, he should be given uh, civil service uh, posting or he should be eligible for civil service that 10th pass will come and say that you are talking about equality i am 10th standard i should also write civil service that is not possible understood so as kind of a reasonable classification should be there. it should not be arbitrary it should not be arbitrary it should not be artificial okay or evasive rather it should be based on the intelligent differential and substantial listing that means some kind of logic should be there okay if you are creating a for example to whom the, law, the for example lockdown is there we should give food to the hunger so who is hunger you should practice you have to find out some classification okay a person who is not having an organized job a person who is income is low so that classification you will do and that is allowed okay so this is what the article 14 in the introduction then we'll go to the next concept within the article 14 rule of law okay rule of law the concept of equality before law okay is an element of the concept of rule of law propounded by av dicey underline the word the concept of equality before law no in article 14 two connotations are there one is equality before law other one is equal protection of law so equality before law is taken from a concept of rule of law this rule of law was given by a person called av dicey okay the british uh, jurist uh, his concept has the following three elements um, not the aspects and underline absence of arbitrary power absence of arbitrary 